Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 14 Developer Preview 2, which is something exciting up until we get March 23 feature drop for Pixel devices. And in today's video, I'm going to show you each and every new change in this build. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the always on display and lock screen as usual. And on the left, I have Developer Preview 1. On the right, I have Developer Preview 2. The first thing you will notice here is the date and weather info are on the same line instead of having two separate lines like before. The gap between the time and the at a glance widget is now smaller. However, the gap between the notifications and the at a glance widget is now much bigger. And when you move to the lock screen on both, you will notice here there is a bug on the 6 Pro that doesn't allow me to do this. It doesn't work most of the time. I have to press the power button. But anyways, you will see the differences here. A bigger gap between the fingerprint icon and the notifications, which used to be smaller. And also everything is now shifted slightly towards the top, as you see here in Developer Preview 2. One more thing worth mentioning here, the bigger gap in Android 14 Developer Preview 2 now shows any info you have in your at a glance widget without the need to hide the date and weather info like we used to have in DP1 and also the stable version. But when you go to the home screen, everything returns back to normal. You don't see the date and weather info same as the previous versions. Now let's move to the home screen and the most obvious change here is the new back arrow. As you see, it looks much better now in DB2 when compared to the previous version. It now supports Material U and has a fill color around it. The other difference here is in the predictive back gesture is now activated by default. As you see, this is what happens when you try to quit any app. The second change is under the wallpaper and the style app. Now there is a new option called clock settings, which means now you can pick a custom clock as shown here in the description, but unfortunately it doesn't work for the time being. But I'm so excited to see what kind of clock styles we can pick in this page. So let's wait and see what's gonna happen in future builds. I also found a new dual color under the basic colors category, which is the black and white one over here that you won't find in the previous version or the stable version of Android 13. It doesn't look exactly like a black and white color, so let's go back to the home screen. As you see, this build is very buggy and I'm not able to go to my home screen now. Let's try to lock and unlock. As you see, there's a kind of a mess happening over here. The phone is stuck, it's doing weird things. Let's try one more time. Okay, so anyways, this is how it looks if you have the themed icons activated. Let's go back to the wallpaper and the style app to show you even more changes and the set wallpaper screen got a complete revamp. So let's go inside the same wallpaper on both. As you see, it's kind of slow on the newer version. It's gonna take its time to go inside. And as you see, it looks totally different now. The white bar at the bottom is no longer showing here, but you will get the home unlock screen tabs right away. So you can change between them like this. And also the download button is now at the top right corner, same as the info button that we used to have at the bottom of the screen. We no longer have the full screen button like before because you already get this view once you go inside. Here, now you have the set wallpaper option after tapping on the download button and also you have the delete over here and instead of having it at the bottom. And here's how the screen looks if the wallpaper has some editing options. So as you see, there is a third button over here for editing the blur effect for some wallpapers like the bloom category, for example. And you can also change the styles from here, same as before. So all the options are now at the top right corner. I think this new design looks much better. Now let's move on to the system wide search. And when I used it for the first time on DB2, I got this new banner says search web and apps. And the description says search now includes content from apps in addition to web. Android system intelligence searches supported apps to provide results. I actually missed to tap on learn more to understand what kind of apps are now supported and I'm not able to get the same message one more time. But let's try some searches and see what we will get. The first thing I noticed here is a bug in some of the cards showing in the results. As you see, there are some weird dots over here and also the text is incomplete. And when I tap on some of the options, as you see, I'm getting a totally blank screen and the phone freezes and I have to lock it and unlock it one more time to be able to get back to the home screen. 
I also tried some searches behind the scenes and I couldn't find any difference in the results I'm getting on DP1 and DP2. So maybe in the future we will see some difference. Now let's move on to the notifications shade and the quick settings area. And of course the media controls got some enhancements. The first one is in the media switcher. As you see here, the volume sliders are now different. Here, when I change the volume, as you see, it looks like before, like the stable version, but now it will show you the percentage when you slide your finger over the slider. And when you push it all the way down to zero, it doesn't go to the edge, but as you see, it has the zero percentage. And when you remove your finger, it will show this speaker icon with a cross on it. But when you take a look at the previous version, as you see, it goes all the way to the edge and disappears, which is no longer the case. The second difference you will see is the new animation when you hit the play and pause button. As you see, it explodes from where the button is located and then moves all the way to the left. And when you leave it for a few seconds, it will keep animating for a while and then stops on its own. And the same thing applies when you use the next and the previous buttons. As you see, it will start from where the button is located and then slide with an angle, which is not also the case with the previous version. One more thing I missed to mention in the media output switcher, if you are playing music instead of a video, you will get a redesigned card. As you see, the device which is currently playing the media will be at the top and anything else will be under a new category called speakers and displays that didn't exist before. And also the music thumbnail and info will no longer appear in this new card. You will only see the app icon. So enough with the media controls and let's take a look at more differences. The first one I found here is in the home controls. As you see, it's shifted now towards the top and the gap over here is much smaller. The second difference in this page, now when you tap on the ellipses, you will see an option called open app instead of add controls. So now all you have is open app or edit controls instead of add controls and edit controls like before. And when you tap on open app, it will certainly take you to the Google Home app. The battery saver tile also got a small tweak. Now when you turn on the feature, you will see which type of battery saver you have activated. As you see now it says standard and instead of only on like before. And when you go inside the settings, you will see an image change here in a sort of basic battery saver. It's now called the standard battery saver. Now let's move on to the differences under settings. And the most exciting change I will share with you when you activate the 5G option on your Pixel phone and you live in the Middle East, you will actually get 5G connectivity right now. As you see here, I'm in the UAE and I'm getting 5G and this is the first time to see this option on any of my Pixel phones. Beside the 5G connectivity, let me show you a new animation in the settings page. As you see here, when I tap on any of the options on both, I'm getting rounded corners in the newer version. And when I go inside the page and go back, it's kind of buggy, but let me go inside multiple pages. When I go back, as you see, the animation is kind of slow and smooth, but this is not the case in the previous version. So when I go back, it's kind of faster than DP2. Another new exciting change under notifications. When you scroll down a little bit, you will see a new option here called flash notifications. Here you can activate the option to use the camera flash when you get a notification. So the phone keeps flashing like the iPhone. And the second thing, you can also activate the screen flash notification. So the screen will give you a colorful flash and you can choose between all these colors. And when you tap on preview, this is how the screen will look like when you get a notification. So let's give it a try. So now the phone is locked and I'm gonna send a message and wait for a few seconds. As you see, it flashed green and also the flash started here on the back so let's try this one more time. As you see, the flash is showing over here. Back to settings and let's go inside battery and then battery usage. And now when you tap on the graph, you will get that 24 hours usage option. As you see here, it says from 12 a.m. till now. And when I tap on it again, it will change to the last full charge. The graph also looks slightly different, but I'm not sure how it will look when I have more usage. So I will uh, talk about this in my follow up video in case I missed any features. Now let's go to battery saver to see some naming changes here. The basic battery saver is now called the standard battery saver. And when you expand the adaptive battery, you will see a new description over here. And when you go to the extreme battery saver settings, 
as you see the heading is now different it has the same name as the menu instead of saying essential apps like before and when you go inside adaptive preferences you will no longer see this info section in dp2 and there is one more thing i want to mention here when you expand the notification shade the first swipe will still show you the battery percentage not the same as dp1 but if you want to get the estimated time you need to give it a second swipe next under display when you scroll down a little bit you will see a new menu item here called navigation mode which will allow you to choose between gesture navigation or the three buttons and instead of going to system and then gestures like before next we have the security and the privacy menu and it got some tweaks when you go inside app security as you see now it has a, a graphical representation for the feature and there is also a new pill button here when you tap on it will take you back to the previous page and you will get the same option no difference here you will see the same behavior in each and every screen all of them got this new graphical representation uh, also there are some naming a change here the google security checkup is now called accounts security and the device findings is now called device finders and here is the splash screen for it also the updates menu is now called system and updates because from here you can check the security update and also the google play system update and when you go inside privacy you will see everything is on the same page like the camera access microphone access show clipboard access and so on and instead of being hidden under a menu called privacy controls also the order of the menus is now slightly different the permission manager comes first and instead of the privacy dashboard and so on and so forth and i also found a new option over here called activity controls but it doesn't do anything when i tap on it so let's go back one step and scroll all the way down here we have two more settings more security more privacy but now it's only one called more settings and it simply consolidates all the options you will find on each one so here are the options under more privacy settings they are exactly the same but when you scroll down you will see the rest of the options under more security settings over here now let's move on to system and then languages and input here you will see a new menu item called regional preferences and from here you can choose the temperature units you can choose between app default or the other two options the first day of the week you can also choose it from here and finally the numbers let's go back to the first page and here we have another new menu item called navigation mode which is exactly the same thing you can find under gestures and then system navigation so now it's separated in its own item so that's everything new under settings now let's talk about some random tweaks i found and the first one is in the media controls card when you dismiss it it will slide to the side on the newer version instead of going down now let me show you some tweaks in the share sheet as well so let's go to the recent apps screen and take a screenshot on both and then tap on the share button and here you will see there is only edit option and the option has a new icon that looks cleaner without any uh, borders around it and the nearby option is no longer at first but you will find it here in the list of choices at the bottom both do exactly the same thing no difference but it just looks different change number three is now you can give partial access to your photos and videos in third-party apps so here is instagram and as you see when i tap on the plus sign now i have three choices allow access to all photos select photos or don't allow so let's tap on select photos and here it will show you the gallery from here you can choose photos or albums and grant access to specific photos or albums from your gallery which is something we saw first on ios and finally we have it in android now now let's talk about the hidden changes in this build and the first one is called detect when users take device screenshots this is a new api that will allow the apps to detect any screenshot activity and give you a toast notification at the bottom of the screen saying that a screenshot has been taken from the app this new api can can be implemented in some of the apps like the payment apps for example to track any screenshot activity in case of any malicious activity happened on the device and the screenshot has been taken you will get a toast notification to be in the safe side 
Change number two is now Android 14 will allow you to dismiss non-dismissable notifications. So if you experienced any app that shows you a notification all the time in your notifications shade, now you can dismiss it if you want to. Change number three is the apps can only kill their own background processes. So the description says here starting in Android 14, when your app calls killing background processes, the API can only kill the background processes of your own app. Number four is Android 14 will put additional restrictions on apps on starting activities from the background and you can know more by reading the description. Last but not least, Mesha Rahman spotted a hidden app in DP2 that will allow you to create wallpapers from your emojis. So here's a screen recording showing how the feature works. It's called Emoji Lab. And when you go inside, you can choose the emojis you want to create the wallpaper from. And once done, then you can choose the patterns. And after that, you have here a slider to make the size smaller or bigger. And finally, you can change the colors. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes in Android 14 Developer Preview 2. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you the next video.